how do you know if your health is getting better or getting worse? Can you determine that from a change in symptoms? If your symptoms get worse, does that mean you're getting worse? If your symptoms get better, does that mean that you're getting better? Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> and we have a whole system of medicine based on that, which is a system that's actually making us worse. Why? How does that happen? Why is it that when the, medical, the modern medical system goes on strike, people stop dying as much? Literally, the death rate goes down every time the medical system goes on strike. The problem is that if you're looking at symptoms, which is at a conscious level what we're aware of, we can suppress a symptom. We can a symptom isn't the cause, it's the effect. So if we're looking at the effect, and we say, I can stop the effect from happening. Well, what's creating, the, what's creating the effect? The effect is created by your body's intelligent response to the cause. So the cause is coming in, your body's saying, oh, that's not good, I gotta do this about it. And you're saying, oh, I don't like doing this. You're not thinking of what it's doing it about, you're not aware of that. Your body's aware of that at an energetic level. So you say, I can stop that from happening. I can, you know, tie my hand behind my back. <laughs> that's what you're doing, you're tying your, body's hands behind its back, when there's still the stress coming in, we have to remove the cause. So it means we have to identify the cause. And so one way of looking at this is very powerful, very helpful to understand, is called regulation, levels of regulation. And you can study this more in, in the course. So the worst level of regulation is blocked regulation. So the worst pattern of health is the pattern of health where the person, where you're going to say, I've been the healthiest person around for 20 years, I haven't gotten the flu. How, did, how is it that I have cancer? I can't tell you, I can't, I, there's, I can't count on my hands because there's too many people that have come to me saying that. If you haven't gotten the flu, if you haven't had a fever in 20 years, it's a sign, it's not a sign that you're healthy, it's a sign that your immune system doesn't have enough energy to do spring and fall house cleaning because the flu came around, right? But you didn't respond to it. The stress, stressor was there, the virus was there, but your body was dealing with even deeper issues. It didn't, wasn't, didn't have the energy and the priority to actually create that general cleansing and uh, uh, inflammatory response to clean out the tissues. So that block level of regulation is the most challenging to deal with. If that's you, you need to know, you need to have great guidance to know what to do because your body's not going to tell you one way or the other. Actually, your body's going to tell you, well, I tried that, it didn't work. I tried that, it didn't work. Nothing works. All these things, you know, I read about it, sounds good, worked for somebody else, worked for my friend, worked for the rest of the family, didn't, doesn't work for me. That's an indication of blocked regulation. So how to know of all the thousands of things that you could do that could theoretically be beneficial to you, which ones your body will ultimately respond to if you stick with them long enough. And that's what we do with, with our uh, energy biocommunication process, is we can actually see the blockage. We can see, oh, you're in a blocked state. And it might be a subtle blockage, it might be a long-term chronic blockage. Uh, but in any case, we can identify usually where in the body that blockage is and what specific energetic input. It might be a certain frequency, it might be a certain a uh, botanical that carries a certain frequency or certain chemi chemistry, which is ultimately frequency as well, but a, a, a spectrum, of, a, a fingerprint of frequencies that creates a cascading effect that begins to break down that blockage, and it might take some time. When I discovered that I was dying of heavy metal toxicity, I actually thought I was pretty healthy. I did have some symptoms that I couldn't account for by my age. I was in my early 30s and I was, my, my, my mind could go faster than my voice, my speech could keep up with, so slurring my speech. And also moments, occasions where I'd forget my name, my phone number, you know, things that don't, don't, don't make sense. There's something was going on neurologically. I suspected mercury toxicity because of the dental situation. I had 14 large amalgams and, and the symptoms just really fit. But I couldn't, with conventional like uh, chemistry tests, urine, urine analysis, trace mineral analysis, 
uh, didn't show up and found out with energetic testing once they came across that from the European Biological Medicine that it was a non-excreter. Energetically, they could identify the mercury toxicity, but the blockage in my body's ability to eliminate it, which is why I was actually in worse shape than a person who might have had more symptoms because they were actually moving the mercury out. Because when we move toxins, they go in our bloodstream and we feel them. When we're storing them, we don't feel it. So if we're in blocked regulation and storing our toxicity, it's, it's, you know, it's quietly building up to the event like a stroke, which would have killed me before age 40 if I hadn't found this out. And it took me about a year of working through eliminating the source by going through you know, lots and lots of dental restoration work, taking out the source of the mercury, and supporting my body to begin eliminating to where I got out of that blocked regulation into the next level of regulation, which is, unfortunately, it's negative regulation, where you feel worse before you feel better, because I started eliminating. I started having pain in my mouth, where the mercury was coming out of tissues, where it come out of the filling and into the jawbone and into the teeth, and now my immune system was getting strong enough and supported enough to get in there and dissolve it and move it out. So, so it's so crucial to know that, because otherwise, You'll, you, at blocked regulation, you'll say nothing works and you'll stop doing it before you start cleansing and healing. At negative regulation, you'll say, oh, this makes me feel worse, and you'll stop doing it before you go through those few days or few weeks of feeling worse to where you're actually getting healthier. You know, after a year, I could look back and say, wow, hey, I'm not slowing my speech anymore. Uh, I'm not having those moments of you know, ischemic attacks where I can't remember my name. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling better. I, now I come out of the dentist's office instead of, you know, wishing I would never have to go to the dentist again. I, one time toward the end of taking out the fillings, I had to jog up and down the street before I had to run the, en the extra energy that was flowing in my system before I could sit in the car and drive home. It was like just so much energy that I hadn't felt in years. So, so with healing crises, we go through that negative regulation of feeling worse, and then we feel better. And, and, and functions and abilities come back that we've, we've missed for years. And it's, it's an amazing experience, amazing feeling, to actually experience functioning younger again. Uh, and then there's other layers of regulation. It gets easier with mixed regulation, where, you know, maybe I'm a little worse here. Maybe I had a headache, and now I have a sore throat. Oh, and then I have chest congestion. Have you ever experienced that with a head cold that goes down to your lungs? This is a healing direction. So this got worse, but this got better. Now this got worse, but this got better. The symptoms are moving down, and that's a good sign that you're moving toward healing. This is how to know if you're healing. If symptoms are moving down the body, if they're moving from inside to out, if they're going from more important areas to less important functions of the body, uh, and if also if they're retracing in reverse time. Healing is a reversal of the consequences, the causality that we've experienced in the past that we haven't been able to heal. And now we're going back and retracing our steps and healing layer by layer, step by step.